One, two, the cut down. So first topic is going to be the Huawei Mate X2. Their second, their true second generation foldable. And this is a big improvement, but yet also equally a big departure from what they originally set out to do from the original Mate X and the Mate XS. And we're gonna be looking at the specs, the breakdown, and what I think actually is a lot of what they've listened to. I feel like they listened to a lot of what I said about my five dislikes video about the Z Fold 2. And y'all know, oh, y'all know I'm in foldables, man. I'm in with foldables, rollables, all the allables and yada, yada, yada. I'm in for the future of where this platform, this Infinity Flex, flexible display, and foldables in any capacity is going so i can't wait to see the development and regardless of what we know the obvious achilles heel is going to be for huawei when it comes to software experience this hardware that i'm seeing from them is a great look minus maybe a few other caveats which we're going to break down we'll look at so let's look at the mate excess big shout out to super Saf on this one i saw this tweet from him bookmarked so this was 22nd of february and we're looking at the Huawei Mate X2. It's rocking an outer display, which is 6.5 inches OLED, 90 Hertz exterior, great stuff so far. Eight inch inner display OLED 90 Hertz interior folding screen, quad camera system, which is using a main 50 megapixel ultra vision, 16 megapixel ultra wide, 12 megapixel telephoto times three zoom, and an eight megapixel super zoom with a times 10 optical. It is using a five nanometer Kirin 9000 5G processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, plus 256 as well as 512 gigabytes of storage. It's using the Emotion user interface EMUI 11 version 11 based on Android 11 from what I believe, but obviously not the full Android 11 with the Google Play services. 4,500 milliamp hour battery with 55 watt Huawei super, um, super charge. And it's looking, it's coming in at um, 17, basically 18,000 yuans. So that's, you know, Chinese currency. So we'll do the conversion and see what I'll go on. And here we are. Huawei Mate X2 co-engineered with Leica. Man, this partnership with Leica has been going for time, but for good reason. And Lord, this looks good. This looks good. Weird in some parts, but overall, I'm very impressed hardware-wise. But there is some caveats to it that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gonna call out just based on what I'm seeing from outside looking in, especially as a foldable user myself. A new classic enters the fold, revolutionizing the design and experience. The Huawei Mate X2 imagine what unfolds okay let's let's watch the video and see what's good Okay. Okay. Hundred times digital zoom. interesting wow imagine what unfolds ah oh, man i love foldables you know man i love foldables and man i can't lie to you i love foldables i love the direction of them what they're about what they're doing 
and this already to fold or not to fold that is the question in the words of shakespeare for tech <laughs> behold a new foldable huawei mate x2 arrives to impress unfolded it fits perfectly in your palm uh, in your pocket and palm as a 6.545 inch flagship display ready to use on a go unfolded it's eight inch full view display offers an eye opening viewing experience up to 90 hertz refresh rate on both screens and delivered a fluid flow keeping your eyes on a bit ah oh, man impressive impressive in terms of the symmetricalness of the thickness i get why they've done that it's not just because of the battery but it's the housing of the camera and the power of it the hinge it all hinges on okay the edge of gravity if you look at it it's kind of like a wedged design from what i can see it's a wedge design approach that they've gone for and that i believe is to house all the camera tech that goes in there because this is looking like some serious non-compromising all-in camera hardware slightly wedge shape gives the one an extra edge the thinnest part to be 4.4 millimeters it's inspiring design that's not slim look but also looks amazingly light and since the center of gravity is closer to where you hold it you enjoy an easier grip okay that's to be you know and you're getting three colors crystal blue crystal pink black why not crystal black huawei keep it consistent and what that man why the fancy colors of the name have to go to these two pink and again a chip that of um the chip of the new block okay cool kira 9000 swivelly 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 wi-fi 6 plus not wi-fi 6e okay interesting and here is the camera hardware right there so they're using their state of the R R Y Y B sensor for what they're doing with the telephoto the 100 times digital zoom and then you've got a 2.5 centimeter macro lens that i believe should be built into the ultra wide angle camera and then obviously 50, 50 megapixel ultra vision camera which should be using some form of pixel bin in where it's going down to maybe 14 or 13 megapixels distance is no barrier scumbag zoom as they call it scumbag zoom as they call it wider sharper 60 megapixel ultra wide and say get fully close gathering okay i don't know if that's dedicated or i'm guessing that's built into the ultra wide i reckon it's built into the ultra wide because you've got the periscope zoom ultra uh, yeah it's built into the ultra wide it must be group selfie okay so there's a pill shape mm, no, i'm not too sure about pill shapes I really don't like pill shapes hole punch fine single hole punch fine pill shapes are oh, so disorientating and look at this it's a full view display with no inner display selfie camera that is a caveat to me i know that's weird but i low-key feel that to be a caveat in my personal opinion streamline your workflow spread your gaming wings okay or cool. eight inch yeah so that's bigger i think the fold two the z fold two is 7.6 inches so i'm guessing they've gone for the bigger display because they've gone for a wider aspect ratio to compensate for the very narrow what i believe is 25 by 9 aspect ratio on the outer display i'm hoping they've done a 20 by 9 or a 21 by 9 no more no less for the aspect ratio for the outer display at 6.4 inches um all four one okay cool cool i dig that all right power to last 4500 and i really like the fact that they've done proper proper supercharging that's in here at 55 watts but i do believe that it does not have wireless charging so 55 watts is the maximum charging power and can only be reached with the dedicated huawei supercharger yeah that's fine 4400 actual capacity um boom, 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 boom. focal length is 240 millimeters okay only 12 megapixel supports yeah so that's where pixel bins down to 12 megapixels um so huawei routers that's the wi-fi 6 plus okay uh thickness yep screen refresh rate 90 hertz in both all right let's go to gsm arena because we'll get some slightly more detailed look so what are we looking at the outer display is 2700 by 1160 and it's a 90 hertz oled display 
the inner display, eight inches, 413 pixels per inch, 2200, okay, cool. So it's 5.4 megapixels. That's, that is a proper, it's it's more than enough resolution to be classed as quad high definition. So you should be able to watch 1440p pixel for pixel. Eight gigabytes of RAM, that's my only point of concern. Eight gigabytes of RAM. And we can see a much more detailed breakdown of obviously the specs we're using like Leica optics 50 megapixels f1.9 aperture 23 millimeter that's the main it's a 1 over 1.28 inch sensor which is massive it's a 1.22 micron pixel size as well omnidirectional face detection autofocus laser af optical image stabilization 12 megapixels f2.8 so that's the times three short throw zoom with optical zoom and it's ois and face detection and then you've got a periscope zoom with the folded um in a glass and sensor which is 8 megapixels f4.4 which isn't going to really let in much light but a equivalent is 240 face detection autofocus okay ois times 10 optical zoom and then you've got an ultra wide which is 17 millimeters equivalent 16 megapixels f2.2 with autofocus okay interesting and again i believe the macro feature with the 2.5 centimeters is built into the ultra wide angle like optics led flash to what extent and limitations you have the 4k uhd up to 60 frames is it on all the sensors or just the main who knows we'll find out and a selfie you are looking at 60 megapixels okay cool but you don't get an inner selfie you don't get an inner selfie on the display 2300 euros lard but I believe, obviously, because of the limitations of not having Google Play services, this is where the challenge is going to be. All right. I I really, really like what Huawei have done here. I feel like they've almost listened and almost watched what my five dislikes on the Z42 were and then literally did most of it. So I think it's a smart decision what they've done to go 90 hertz inside, 90 hertz outside. 120 hertz would be better but honestly 90 mm -hmm. hertz can be more than enough for the circumstances and i'm really glad that they've been able to actually get that done for the outer display as well as the inner display the inner display as counted if you do the maths of what the inner display resolution is it is more than enough to be classed as quad high definition quad high definition you need about 3.6 megapixels it counts at 5.6 megapixels for the inner display so it's a sharp inner display for the eight inches and you're getting 90 hertz yes it's not 120 but it's great but outer display two of the biggest things i'm seeing is the fact there's high refresh rate it's a good above slightly 1080p and also the aspect ratio seems more accustomed to what we've been used to with the modern day smartphones that are about 19 by 19 by 9 aspect ratio 20 by 9 aspect ratio which is going to make it so much more usable because one of my biggest complaints with the z Fold 2 was the fact that 25 by 9 it's very narrow it's even it's way more narrow than the 21 by 9 aspect ratio you see so that's where my point of concern is so now they've been able to make it wider it will feel more accustomed to what you're used to in terms of the width of a normal traditional modern solid state smartphone making it much more usable as a smartphone again they've gone for that tapered wedge design is to accommodate all the camera hardware because it looks like they've not held back this camera is looking to probably you know undoubtedly have the most powerful camera hardware for affordable smartphone at the compromise of a much more even thin equal design across the board so i love that they've not held back now i do believe that the pill shape does house like a face id biometric face unlock one oh, I, I just don't like pill shapes a single hole punch works but i just don't like pill shapes i just don't like pill shapes now bringing that through i look at i look at what they've been able to do and i think it's a mistake not putting an inner display in in a in a camera for the inner display i get it that you want to get a full tablet view but i think it misses the opportunity to be able to use the eight inch foldableness to really utilize for things like conference calls so uh, when i'm on microsoft teams on the Z Fold 2 with the inner display, it's so well optimized with how it uses the whole display with the front facing, um, with the inner display camera, that it's just such a nice touch. And also all the flexibility that you would have get with also having the inner display camera with the camera 
using it with the foldable hinge and you know all the different modes that you can have with it it's all gone you kind of have to you're forced to have to use the one on the outside and obviously the main which isn't necessarily the end of the world but one of the fun things was actually using an inner you know viewfinder for your selfies in different ways especially when you're doing conference calls and video calls where it's optimized for that foldable display being able to you know whether it's teams duos or whatever app it is being able to utilize it it was just such a nice feature to be able to plant it there angle it and you can do your conference calls so that's one caveat that i've got in there long-term power i think eight gigabytes of ram for affordable device that really pushes the limits of what true multitasking does i don't think eight gigabytes of ram is enough i complain about the 12 gigabytes of ram not because it slows down but i feel like after the next two years it might hit that ceiling because sometimes when i'm really pushing it hard i can see it hit close to 10 gigabytes you know, so I actually wish this foldable had 16 gigabytes of RAM, like what you find in the S20 Ultra as well as the S21 Ultra. Those are the initial caveats that I'm seeing and the lack of wireless charging as well. Not a good look when it comes to the price that you're offering. Not a good look. Again, I'm not a wireless charging person, so I don't necessarily care that much. I prefer the 55 watt super fast charging that they've put in there because one of, again, the biggest complaints I had with the Z42, 25 watt charging and the fact that it takes almost an hour and a half to charge from dead zero to 100, it's just too slow for my personal opinion. I need it under that one hour charge time, especially for the battery capacity that it's charging. What's obviously unfortunate for Huawei is one, the availability of it seems to be available only in China and the, um, the Asian market. Two, no Google services internationally. They're still plagued by that and it's quite a shame. It's quite a shame. But one thing I do say is I do appreciate what they're doing. I appreciate the fact that even in this tough time for them, hardware wise, they are flexing, pun intended, and they're really bringing the heat. And I really hope they still keep it going for as long as they can because they will keep companies like Samsung honest in really making a difference in what the next generation of the Z Flip 2 and the Z Fold 3 need to be to really kick butt. I'm excited for what's coming, but with what Huawei brought out, it gives me hope that, wow, foldables are heading in the right direction. Just being able to change from being a normal screen phone, which is now wider based on aspect ratio, much more usable. And then you can have an even bigger eight inch display from the 7.6 that you get on here. And both displays are high refresh rate and you're getting a class leading camera that does not compromise from what you're used to on these normal solid state smartphones like what you get with the Note 20 Ultra you're getting on the foldable rather than getting a not that it's a bad system but more of a mix of what the S10 and the S20 are rather than the up-to-date system yeah that's impressive so those are my initial thoughts of the Huawei Mate X2 unfortunate with the current situation they're in and the availability, some caveats just from the outside looking in, especially as a Fold user myself. But wow, this is a good look. This is a really good look and I'm digging it. I'm digging it, man. That's my thoughts on a Huawei Mate X2.